All right, here we are, live on YouTube. YouTube, good morning. Good to have you along here this morning. If you're watching this as a replay, you can skip ahead about five and a half minutes uh, to when we start the radio on. <laughs> yeah, folks, here I am on YouTube. I, I know you're, you'll see it. Getting text messages. Are we on yet? Just started. Well, it's always good to know people are listening. Oh, boy. Can we get some questions for us today? Hopefully. <clears throat> Depends on how uh, how you want to start uh, the show. Out. We can uh, start talking about the uh, worst deer hunting round and just pick one and then boom. I guarantee people will call in. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that something? The thing about talk radio. If you want people to call in, you have to piss somebody off. You know what I mean? That is so true. And it, it is when, so I, when I listen to true. any of the talk shows uh, right now on in the morning side on any radio station, any side of the aisle, nobody's happy. They're always mad. No matter who is elected or doing what they're doing, no matter what side it is, they're always mad, mad here. Well, we got to oh, Somebody called in and now they're not there anymore they can call back i did i did uh scott show tuesday wednesday this week and you know i didn't have i just had informational good good guests on mm -hmm. but i didn't have controversy on and i you know i i have maybe one caller yep yeah and you know what i like callers i like people calling but most of the time when people call it's because they're mad at something or someone yeah. or something but I'm really trying to take a, uh, a better uh, side, you know, better take on that. I listen to both Joel and Scott. No matter what happens, they're always angry. And then you yeah. look at their Facebook posts, and they're always angry. They're always trying to stir something, you know. And I'm like, going after somebody. And, yeah, you know, it's well, like, you don't you know, have to work at it. I don't want to be that work guy. At it when you do that, you you can. Um, it, it makes killing time pretty easy because you it's just true. Very manage true. calls. <laughs> Absolutely. Know, that's what I think. Yeah. Wayne Muth, good morning. Good to have you on YouTube this morning. He says hi to you too, Ron. Hi to Wayne Muth. Hope to tell him I hope to see him in Man Man on March sure. 13th. It's too bad you don't get an auctioneer that knows uh, a little bit more about the Mueller Foundation. <laughs> Who does it? <laughs> I don't know. They never ask me. <laughs> don't they? I, I never. I, honestly, I just can't remember who does it. That's Marshall. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This is, uh, what's that? your call in number? Is it 05? No. 888 932 5682. I did a different one because I'm on more than just K Fire. Since I'm on the South Dakota stations, I, did a, I didn't want to have a favor number. So I just got my own toll free number. It's 888 9 Dakota is the. Uh, Pen, the name of that. And paper. Morning, Darren Munn. Good morning. Have, good to have you with us this morning. Let's see. Two minutes, uh, roughly two minutes, Ron, and stations, two minutes. <clears throat> you guys got some tree planting. You guys all wrapped up on that for this year? Uh, we've got pretty much full, full, okay, full slate scheduled. Good enough. So, but we should talk about it because we'll be taking uh, orders for next year. So, 888 932 5682. No, 932-5682. 932-5682. Wayne says, hope to see both at the banquet on the 13th while having a type of hybrid yeah. set up. Yeah. Okay. If you're interested in coming, Scott, let me know. 13th? Let me yeah. Let see what my schedule has. March 13th. I have a, well, I'll be up there. I'll have a gun auction in Bismarck. I'll be uh, actually auctioning a gun auction. So I'll be in the Bismarck area. Might swing by. Okay, I'll have a, I'll have a spot for you. All right. All right. We have uh, about uh, forty seconds. Stations forty seconds on mark. 
Yes, Jesse, a gun auction. Uh, it's one from Shane Wolf. He's the one who asked me to be on a gun mm -hmm. auction on the 13th. So that's what's going on there. Waylon Turnus. Morning, Waylon. Let's see. They hired a new CEO for the Mule Deer Foundation. Did they? Or you? Yeah, yeah we're still on the board. On Hold on. We, we, we got yeah. 15 seconds here. Stand by. Stations, 10 seconds coming up on Mark. 10 seconds. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Saturday edition of Dakota Perry Outdoors. I'm Scott Bachmeyer, and for the next hour, we have the privilege to talk anything outdoors. Now, just a heads up for next Saturday's radio program. I uh, I, I wrapped up Representative Dusty Johnson out of South Dakota. He'll be on my he'll be my guest uh, calling from Washington D.C. And uh, along with everything else, I have many questions about the gun control legislation that's coming through the federal side of things, uh, especially with the push of this new administration. So just a heads up, Representative Dusty Johnson next Saturday. So if you uh, get your questions ready for him this morning, I welcome Ron Ness here, president of the North Dakota Petroleum Council. And if you would like to call in, the toll free line is 888-932-5682. That's 888-932-5682 or 888-9-DAKOTA. Mr. Ron Ness, how you been, sir? Well, good morning, Scott. I'm doing just fine. We're moving a little closer towards spring outdoor activities. And another uh, looks like a beautiful week ahead of North Dakota. So I'm talking today from the Santan Valley, Arizona. I'm down here visiting family over the legislative crossover and playing a lot of golf. Santan Valley. I've never heard of that. Which way is that from uh, Phoenix? It's just south of the Mesa Airport down oh, here in Johnson okay. Ranch area. It's not south by Gilbert. So, yeah, it's growing. I think they're getting, uh, what, like 60,000 people a year moving down here or something yeah. like that. It's crazy. It seems like the place to go. You know, I think my brother and my sister, my sister-in-law are both down there. And uh, a lot of people from the northern tier up here head that way for the winter. Snowbirds, as they call them, right, Ron? They are uh, snowbirds, and it is just the weather is just perfect. That's why they're here. So 70, <laughs> 73 degrees, no wind, just just great. Golf courses are open, so uh, lots of things to do. Wouldn't that be boring if you had the same nice weather every single morning? I mean, think about hunting wise. How it would be so hard to pattern any deer or anything like that if it was exactly the same weather. That's why we like our fifty below days that we had up here, Ron. It was, it you know, we it was easy to clean coyotes. Well, Scott, we we are going to need some. We're going to need some spring weather. We're going to need some rain. We're going to need some uh, spring snows. Oh, or I, I imagine you're a little dusty out there on the on the ranch. I've never seen uh, when I feed cows on on the trails here in February. I've never had it where it's as dry and dirty as it is right now. It's a, it's a little bit on the scary side. It really is, you know. And so you're right. We need moisture, and uh, moisture is one one thing that keeps things rocking and rolling. Whether it's agriculture side or the hunting side i mean uh we had a nice open winter for the, especially our mule deer and they're looking pretty decent ron i i know you're still on the board of directors for the mule deer foundation on the federal on national side so uh you said you just uh, hired a new ceo is that right we did our ceo miles Brady has been there about 16 years and he's retiring and we just hired a guy by the name of joel peterson comes to us from the wild turkey federation he's got uh, i think 20 around 25 years working for the Wild Turkey Federation. And uh, I think he's just going to be a fantastic guy. I starts, uh, I believe, March 8th, and I can't wait to get him up to North Dakota. And um, he'll be he'll be uh, taking over. And uh, certainly uh, it's been a challenging year for nonprofit wildlife organizations yeah. you and I have discussed before. But, you know, overall, I, it's amazing how generous people are and a lot of uh, the, the big... Uh, the big show for the Mule Deer Foundation, of course, is in Salt Lake. They get about 55,000 people to come through the, the trade show, and that was canceled. But did kind of a, you know, can't make it this year, but save me a spot for next year type of ticket with a chance on guns. And mm -hmm. um, did, did their auctions, and it was off the charts in terms of the, the, the generosity of people and understanding that we got to support these groups. So uh, we, we've got some more opportunities to do that in North Dakota. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But um I think you're right. Good year for wildlife uh, survival yeah. in North Dakota. So I'm hoping, 
hoping for good things ahead. Good things. Good things. I Well, we, let's talk a little bit about the music. We only got about five more minutes before our first break. And uh, let's get this done because uh, Wayne Moose says that they're doing a hybrid type of a setup for the Mule Deer Banquet coming up March 13th in the Mandan side. And, uh, you know, a lot of these, whether it's Whitetail or Pheasants Forever, Ducks Unlimited, uh, NRA Foundation, or any of these uh, type of uh, banquets that really rely on that as your fundraiser uh, for the organization and in your state throughout the year. Last year, a lot of that didn't happen. Did you still see people uh, writing checks and mailing them into you guys just to help keep things going and keep the conservation side going? Yes, people were very generous, but of course, you know, a lot of those, a lot of those things, when you go to the banquet, that's how you renew your membership. Oh yeah. 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 So that's something that I think you're going to see uh, most of the wildlife organizations try and change and do some type of an online membership where, you know, you, you send in your membership and you, you get chances at, at guns or something yeah. because this, this whole model of, we've been talking about that in the national meal deer board for quite a while, this model of, showing up, having a big banquet. Um, Marshall Johnson, of course, our, our regional director in North Dakota has kind of been the, the national leader in terms of the gun of Palooza and yeah. the, the events where people, what, what do people want these days? They want, they want guns. They want good stuff. They want a uh, quick social interaction and then, uh, out the door. So you know, a couple hour events, I think are the thing of the future. And we got to figure out how to transition the membership out of that traditional and maybe still have the traditional banquets somewhat. But I think the one that's going to be in the Belmont in uh, Mandan on March 13th, they're going to open it up in the afternoon for people to come in without a, uh, without a banquet ticket, uh, you know, buy, buy right. chances on guns and other gear and kind of a, a lot of silent auction type opportunities and, and uh, more of a gun of And then that evening, I, I believe they got, uh, space for about 200 people so uh, selling selling uh, the traditional tables and banquets and i think we've got them spaced out there for covid and um should be good so i don't know yeah. if you've you've been doing any events scott but it seems like um events are starting to ramp up and even down here in arizona there's uh, a lot of people are getting vaccinations and things seem to be opening up pretty good and i, th- I thought the economy down here was moving more than i expected it to be this week have you seen any concern, you know, you, everybody in the Dakota Territory, I mean, when it's a raffle, there's a good chance there's guns on it. You know, with this uh, kind of this administration being uh, very anti-gun, are we seeing any concerns about this uh, for fundraising down the road I mean, in the next four years? Well, you're probably uh, got a better handle on that. And certainly your listeners do than I do, Scott, but okay. I, I think there's a, I think there's a lot of things that we all better be concerned about. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, just the rant craziness. And, and maybe after the break, we can talk about, you know, the Texas disaster grid and what, what all that means to all of us. And it just, it's shocking. And, um, I did an interview with the Houston Chronicle yesterday about, you know, how, how North Dakota wind rises our, our oil and gas, uh, operations in order to make sure that they work at uh, cold temperatures and uh, you know i was trying to explain to this guy it, it, it's just what we wake up and do it we don't have to have regulations to our, our cars don't start if we don't uh, prepare to have them start in the morning at exactly. 30 below but you can't really plan for that every day and in texas it's just one of those things you've got to we, we've We've lost our grid resiliency and, and stability, and we can we can chat about that. But, Sounds good. Um, yeah, we're, we're up against our break here. Ron Ness with the North Dakota Petroleum Council covering more than just North Dakota. We'll talk about all the nation here, and the uh, especially when it comes to fossil fuels. That'll be coming up next after the break. Just a reminder, Action Motorsports on the Strip and Mandan has players, Ranger, Razors, General, Sportsmen, four-wheelers to help you, whether you work or play. Whether you're hunting in the Badlands, ripping trails on the Black Hills, putting mineral out in the pasture, getting a baby calf away from a not-so-friendly mama cow, Polaris and Action Motorsports can get you in the right ATV or UTV to keep you having fun and being safe. Check out Action Motorsports on the Strip and Mandan. Walk in, ask Britt. Tell him that you want the calving special today and see how that goes. Action Motorsports on the Strip and Mandan. We'll be back with more. Ron Ness with the North Dakota Petroleum Council is my guest. I'm Scott Bachmeyer. This is the Saturday edition of Dakota Prairie Outdoors Radio. <laughs> Thank you.
Cattle Producers, the DK Red Angus Ranch Top Coming to Town production sale is Saturday, March 6, 2 p.m. Central Time at Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota. Selling 69 purebred Red Angus Bulls, 3 Red Angus Char Composite Bulls, 4 Red and Black Angus Simitol Composite Bulls, 2 Black Red Jean Carrier Bulls, 45 Fancy Registered Red Angus Yearling Heifers, 10 Red Angus Commercial Yearling Heifers, 10 Commercial Open Heifers, and 5 75% Red with 25% Charlotte Composite Bred Heifers. First breeding season is guaranteed, plus 600 mile delivery for of charge. You can also bid online at dvauction.com. If you're looking for fresh genetics, calving ease, and good dispositions, make sure to be in the seats on Saturday, March 6, 2 p.m. Central Time at the Sitting Bull Auction in Williston for the DK Red Angus. Top coming to town production sale. When it comes to picking the right financial institution that best suits your unique banking needs, we invite you to come bank with Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Recently named North Dakota's best small bank in Newsweek's America's best banks in 2021. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our online and mobile customers, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods the area's local gun and ammo specialist. Our outdoor heritage is important to North Dakotans, and the state's oil and natural gas industry is advancing the possibilities for conservation. The North Dakota Outdoor Heritage Fund receives up to $40 million per biennium from oil and natural gas taxes. The industry is reclaiming land for future generations, and it's developing our state's natural resources in harmony with our great outdoors and wildlife. North Dakota oil and natural gas, advancing the possibilities. Brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. Join Pfeiffer's Auctioneers for these upcoming farm equipment auctions in Sioux Falls, Steele, Bowman, Jamestown, Bowdoin, Marmoth, Lear, Raleigh, and Bismarck. In March, Pfeiffer's will be hosting the two-day Western Dakota Equipment Auction in Bowman, featuring the Charlie Hilton and Abercrankie retirements, followed by the premier Reuben and Clarice Lichty Farm Retirement Auction in Jamestown. Inventory is updated daily on all Pfeiffer's Equipment Auctions, including the quarterly timed online-only auctions and our multiple regional equipment auctions in North and South Dakota. Get all details and information at Pfeiffer's.com. Rockin' 7W has all the panels you need. Freestanding panels, windbreak panels, feeder panels, and the original protester panel. If you don't know what that is, it's a sort panel that makes sorting calves from a cow a breeze. You can do it in a fraction of time with just one person on foot or horseback. You can custom order sizes to fit your current operation, or you can start from scratch. Rockin' 7W also does trailer repair on any size trailers, mobile welding, and custom cattle hauling. Call Justin at Rockin' 7W at 701-206-1030. That's 701-206-1030, Rockin' 7W, the farmer and rancher's go-to guy. MoPro Guide Service, the best on Lake Oahe. Brent and his staff will give you the most enjoyable fishing experience, always having the latest in electronics, gear, and the most comfortable Lund boat on the water. Fish with somebody who lives in Mobridge, South Dakota, the heart of Lake Oahe. If you need a place to stay, the Morest Motel has newly updated rooms with free internet, a family-owned and operated business. Go to oahewalleyes.com. That's O-A-H-E, walleyes.com, for the best fishing experience Lake Oahe has to offer. Cattle Producers, the DK Red Angus Ranch Top Coming to Town production sale is Saturday, March 6, 2 p.m. Central Time at Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota. Selling 69 purebred Red Angus Bulls, 3 Red Angus Char Composite Bulls, 4 Red and Black Angus Simitol Composite Bulls, 2 Black Red Jean Carrier Bulls, 45 Fancy Registered Red Angus Yearling Heifers, 10 Red Angus Commercial Yearling Heifers, 10 Commercial Open Heifers, and 5 75% Red with with 25% Charlotte Composite Bread Heifers. First breeding season is guaranteed, plus 600-mile delivery free of charge. You can also bid online at dvauction.com. If you're looking for fresh genetics, calving ease, and good dispositions, make sure to be in the seats on Saturday, March 6, 2 p.m. Central Time at the Sitting Bull Auction in Williston for the DK Red Angus. Top coming to town production sale.
Welcome back, everybody. It's a Saturday edition, Dakota Prairie Outdoors. Good to have you along. Over 13 years uh, doing the radio show here. Ron Ness from the North Dakota Petroleum Council is my guest. Can you believe that, Ron? Over 13 years here, I've been uh, the the voice of the uh, Dakota Prairie. You know what I mean? No, that's. Uh, I remember when you uh, when you started. Yeah. <laughs> you moved back. A little, when did you move back out to the ranch, Scott? <sighs> I moved uh, 10 years now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So uh, it's a. Uh, somebody asked me that the other day. They're like, "How long have you been doing this radio program?" I'm like. I had to add it up and everything. And I've saved every single radio program on my uh, external hard drive. And I have to add this up and how many radio shows I've actually done between my daily and my uh, uh, Saturday morning shows. But uh, I'm going to have to add that up and maybe have a party this year. Tell you what, maybe come out to the ranch at branding time there, Ron. You need to come out and uh, join us for a little bit of activities. Sounds like a deal. <laughs> so uh, we were we were discussing crude oil prices a little yes. bit and of course gas gasoline prices and isn't it just something that uh you know president biden's been in office for just a little over a month and really nothing has changed in in price of oil has gone up almost uh 15 or 18 dollars i think and really just the the rhetoric and in the comments and we're going to stop you know we're going to ban federal leasing we're going to stop mm-hmm. Uh, put a moratorium on permits. We're going to shut down the Keystone XL pipeline. Of course, the, the Dakota access pipeline, uh, just, just the thought of that, just almost uh, three and a half, well, over three and a half years now of operating daily, carrying 570,000 barrels of uh, high quality North Dakota Bach and crude oil to the Louisiana Gulf coast, which displaces Libyan crude and OPEC crude. And, you know, supplies that oil and gas back up to uh, back up to all of the uh, all of the rest of America as it gets refined. But you know, it's just uh, so he's you know, the president's been very good for crude oil prices and, and, uh, and added a lot of cost to gasoline prices. But the thought that they would shut down now, shut down Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, is pretty scary. And yeah. I think the North Dakota legislature did a study and it's about 160 million dollars of biennium uh, just to the state of North Dakota and. And what that would do in terms of energy prices across the country and, and further rising crude oil prices. And, you know, I know you got a question there. What's how does this help the industry? And, and yeah. certainly the increased crude oil prices has helped, you know, what I think is an economically struggling um, oil and gas sector. But you can't really plan on this because nothing fundamentally has changed. And you don't know. It's, it's not like people are jumping out to add drilling rigs or add completion crews. So. Yeah, you're you're continuing to produce your oil, but we have to have something here that shows this is going to stick around, or or what's going to be a result of it. And of course, the financial health of the industry has to attract money from Wall Street and other places who are now told that we're going to put fossil fuels out of business. And uh, we saw how well that worked in the state of Texas last week. <laughs> so let's they, talk, they have yeah, shut let's down. Talk Scott, about they Texas have here. And what actually happened, Ron? Because uh, you know everybody says, well, you see the pictures on social media where the windmills are froze up, and you see uh, the snow-covered uh, solar panels. You know like, what actually happened? Why is that such a big deal down in Texas? Don't they have their own oil? I mean, Texas is a huge oil-producing state themselves. Well, as as you know, uh, how well do things work on your farm without electricity? And, and exactly. we need base load power electricity all the time, not just when the sun shines or the wind blows. And what Texas has done, and North Dakota is on the cusp of doing this, is they have shut down 6,500 megawatts a day of coal-fired power coal generation. So, uh, of course, what backfilled that was was wind and solar, and then backed with with natural gas and when you turned off the juice, what happened? You, you also shut down compression stations. You you froze up equipment that wasn't ready. Of course, you froze up homes. You froze up pipes. The wind wasn't blowing. The sun wasn't shining. So you had no ability. I think they were at about 2% of their uh, electricity was coming from wind at that point. So, you know, the, the moral of the story, and I think it's going to be really revealed out of Texas, is that you cannot just allow us to to move towards this you know green new deal type of energy where uh we shut down more and more coal generation because as you saw i don't know if you got your power shut off scott at the ranch but we certainly did in bismarck and and the day before on monday it happened across the market and 
you know, the power cooperatives in the Bakken were, were savvy enough to know you can't shut down the big compression stations that are moving the crude oil and the, and the get natural gas because you're shutting down the very feedstock that you need. So uh, they kept they kept the industry moving in order to feed all of us natural gas. But you shut down that electricity, and so much of our you know oil and gas sector is is run off electricity and the technology and the and telemetry that's used out on the pads and, and the compression stations that move the pipeline. So we're very reliant on on electricity, and of course, um, electricity from a stable standpoint comes from. I think it still comes from coal. Absolutely. Um, so you can't, we just can't as a nation be shutting down these coal facilities because we're making them uneconomic because we're, we're making wind so attractive. You know, you see the, there's been a, I think I read it on the, um, some website here about the coal fired power plants <laughs> up in North Dakota that, uh, what is it? 2035 or 2055 or something like that. They're looking at being done with them. <laughs> Is this actually, you know, is this Green New Deal type of thing that uh, a lot of people are kind of getting uh, getting on that? Uh, is it going to work? Is what I, I mean, is it, can't they see what happened in Texas and say, well, we still need the coal-fired power plants in order to something happens along the lines? I mean, can't they see this or are they uh, kind of oblivious to this? Well, these these people are the same people, uh, the same mindset of people that don't like guns and don't like uh, production agriculture and uh, I, don't, I don't know if you uh yeah. it was a kind of a funny deal on uh bill gates had said that a cow emits just as much <laughs> uh, carbon dioxide as a as a as a car as, yeah. a, as a car and, yeah. and then i saw so somebody said well why don't uh, bill gates should put himself in his garage and i'll put myself in my garage with my with my cow and he puts himself in his garage with his car and we'll, we'll have breakfast in the morning and we'll see who, uh, yeah. you know, which he pants more. And it's not, <laughs> it's not funny, but it's kind of funny. I, I thought it was funny because, <laughs> uh, and you know, for somebody that raises cattle, it's like, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, they, they, they wake up every day and they, they believe that we should not have pipelines, that we should not have coal. We should not have fossil fuels. And the, the, agenda that they're advancing of course just pushes that and it it cuts off financing it cuts off the ability to produce energy and in north dakota um you know i always say if those people don't want if they don't want fossil fuel energy well fine then you know disconnect your exactly. there's a there's a valve coming into your house for natural gas just go turn it off and just go you know put put yourself up a, a windmill and a solar panel and have at it but yeah uh, it seems like last week in Texas, they got a little bit of a lesson and you know, Texas think of it as a big energy state, but mm -hmm. there's also a lot of really uh, left agenda down there that, that is uh, pushing against some of the things that we all support as well. It, it would be nice if you could uh, selectively pick which ones you could send and who supports. Uh, what was it? That one gas, uh, gas station, I think it was in Nebraska. There's a sign that says if, uh, if you don't like uh, fossil fuels, go fill up somewhere else. And, you know, I mean, is it going to come to that? Is it going to come to a fight or is, I mean, if it was 2019, the first year we're energy independent, 13 years ago when I first interviewed you, we were talking about energy independence and how crucial that is to the security of our nation. And now we're getting more, we're going back to uh, importing uh, oil and gas. I, I I don't get it, Ron. I have no clue. Yeah, we, we've gotten a little, uh, we've gotten a little soft and we take things for granted because it's too easy, but you're exactly right. We've worked so hard as a country to, you know, use that that 800 years of coal in the ground that we have in North Dakota, the fact that we would contemplate even, even leaving that in the ground forever. And, uh, you know, the amazing resource of the Bakken, we've got one of the top 10 oil fields in the world. And here we are, uh, you know, trying to shut down the, the ability to move it across this country to use this energy, but we're going to buy that same energy from uh, somebody across the country, you know, across the pond, people that hate us. And, uh, Libya and mm -hmm. Iran, Iraq, and we're we're entering back into those deals. So maybe maybe the uh, wake up call that we had last week will, you know, uh, have a have an ability to make people sit, sit back and recognize we have to have uh, coal fired power generation, and and that starts in North Dakota. It does. Uh, we cannot allow because once those plants shut down, uh, you're not going to put them back up again. So right, right, uh, we're up against the hold on. We're up against the break here. Stand by with us here, and uh, we're going to keep you in for a little bit of the second half hour. Is that all right? That's and right. we we got some calls coming in. Hey, if you're calling, stay on the line. We're going to break. We'll be back. More Dakota Prairie Outdoors after these messages. <laughs> Thank you.
Cattle producers, the DK Red Angus Ranch Top Coming to Town production sale is Saturday, March 6, 2 p.m. Central Time at Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota. Selling 69 purebred Red Angus Bulls, 3 Red Angus Shar Composite Bulls, 4 Red and Black Angus Simitol Composite Bulls, 2 Black Red Jean Carrier Bulls, 45 Fancy Registered Red Angus Yearling Heifers, 10 Red Angus Commercial Yearling Heifers, 10 Commercial Open Heifers, and 5 75% Red with 25% Charlay Composite Bread Heifers. First breeding season is guaranteed, plus 600 mile delivery for free of charge. You can also bid online at dvauction.com. If you're looking for fresh genetics, calving ease, and good dispositions, make sure to be in the seats on Saturday, March 6, 2 p.m. Central Time at the Sitting Bull Auction in Williston for the DK Red Angus. Top coming to town production sale. When it comes to picking the right financial institution that best suits your unique banking needs, we invite you to come bank with Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Recently named North Dakota's best small bank in Newsweek's America's best banks in 2021. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our online and mobile customers, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods. The area's local gun and ammo specialist. Our outdoor heritage is important to North Dakotans, and the state's oil and natural gas industry is advancing the possibilities for conservation. The North Dakota Outdoor Heritage Fund receives up to $40 million per biennium from oil and natural gas taxes. The industry is reclaiming land for future generations, and it's developing our state's natural resources in harmony with our great outdoors and wildlife. North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. Join Pfeiffer's Auctioneers for these upcoming farm equipment auctions in Sioux Falls, Steele, Bowman, Jamestown, Bowdoin, Marmoth, Lear, Raleigh, and Bismarck. In March, Pfeiffer's will be hosting the two-day Western Dakota Equipment Auction in Bowman, featuring the Charlie Hilton and Abercrinky retirements, followed by the premier Reuben and Clarice Lichty Farm Retirement Auction in Jamestown. Inventory is updated daily on all Pfeiffer's Equipment Auctions, including the quarterly timed online-only auctions and our multiple regional equipment auctions in North and South Dakota. Get all details and information at Pfeiffer's.com. Rockin' 7W has all the panels you need. Freestanding panels, windbreak panels, feeder panels, and the original protester panel. If you don't know what that is, it's a sort panel that makes sorting calves from a cow a breeze. You can do it in a fraction of time with just one person on foot or horseback. You can custom order sizes to fit your current operation, or you can start from scratch. Rockin' 7W also does trailer repair on any size trailers, mobile welding, and custom cattle hauling. Call Justin at Rockin' 7W at 701-206-1030. That's 701-206-1030, Rockin' 7W, the farmer and rancher's go-to guy. MoPro Guide Service, the best on Lake Oahe. Brent and his staff will give you the most enjoyable fishing experience, always having the latest in electronics, gear, and the most comfortable Lund boat on the water. Fish with somebody who lives in Mobridge, South Dakota, the heart of Lake Oahe. If you need a place to stay, the Morest Motel has newly updated rooms with free internet, a family-owned and operated business. Go to oahewalleyes.com. That's O-A-H-E, walleyes.com, for the best fishing experience Lake Oahe has to offer. Cattle producers, the DK Red Angus Ranch Top Coming to Town production sale is Saturday, March 6, 2 p.m. Central Time at Sitting Bull Auction, Williston, North Dakota. Selling 69 purebred Red Angus Bulls, 3 Red Angus Char Composite Bulls, 4 Red and Black Angus Simitol Composite Bulls, 2 Black Red Jean Carrier Bulls, 45 Fancy Registered Red Angus Yearling Heifers, 10 Red Angus Commercial Yearling Heifers, 10 Commercial Open Heifers, and 5 75% Red with 25% Charlay Composite Bread Heifers. First breeding season is guaranteed, plus 600 mile delivery free of charge. You can also bid online at dvauction.com. If you're looking for fresh genetics, calving ease, and good dispositions, make sure to be in the seats on Saturday, March 6, 2 p.m. Central Time at the Sitting Bull Auction in Williston for the DK Red Angus. Top coming to town production sale. On that road, <laughs> 15 second stations, 15.
Welcome back, everybody, to Dakota Prairie Outdoors Saturday Edition. Good to have you along this hour. You're listening to me on KGFX in Pierre, South Dakota, KOLY, Mobridge, South Dakota, K Fire 550, and Bismarck Mandan, KCJB and Minot, and KLTC Dickinson, and around the world on my YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing and tuning in today on YouTube right here on Dakota Prairie Outdoors Radio. Just a reminder Ponderosa, screen printing and embroidery, Rapid City, South Dakota. My good friend Doug Morrison uh, would love to do any jackets, t shirts, uh, sweats, caps, uh, promotional products for you, whether it's safety, uh, fire resistant clothing, and more. They carry it. You can go to 619 Street, uh, jo- or let's see here, 619 Joseph Street in Rapid City, South Dakota, or just look them up. Ponderosa Screen Printing and Embroidery. You tell them you heard it on Dakota Prairie Outdoors, you get 10% off your order. And the more you buy, the more it's going to work here. Ron Ness from the North Dakota Petroleum Council is my guest here this morning. Ron, I tell you what, you ready to take a phone call here? Absolutely. Let's do it here. Let's welcome uh, Jamie slash Ruger, whatever his name is, because all the talk shows kicked him off, but not mine. Jamie, <laughs> welcome to the program. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. Thanks for having me on. Morning, Ron. Uh, Good morning. My question is, so like when Biden tells everybody we're going to we're going to ban fracking and we're not going to use oil and you know, we're going to shut down these coal mines and <clears throat> Um, you know, these liberal governors in these states, like if, okay, like they restrict your second amendment rights all the time, that's in the constitution. It's your right to own guns and, and buy guns and carry guns while well, they just turn their head at that. And states like, what is there? 11 states that, that are sanctuary states for illegal aliens. I mean, they're here illegally. They don't get kicked out. Why don't, why doesn't governor Brigham just t- say, tell Biden, Hey, sit and spin. We're going to keep digging coal and using coal power and fracking for oil. Come and stop us. And if he wants to send in his, his goons, then Bergen could just say, uh huh, people's militia, they're going to be on my side. We'll just stop Biden from sending in his guys and stopping us. What, what's stopping Governor Bergen from doing that? Well, I think on the, on the oil and gas side, certainly you need a, if you're going to operate on federal lands, uh, you've got, uh, you've got to have federal permits. That's in the law. And of course, uh, what, what they're going to have behind them, uh, coming shortly is the, uh, EPA and the Department of Justice, and uh, they, they would love nothing better, of course, than to find uh, fossil fuel companies and, and use them as a um, you know, a message to everybody else. I, I think, from our standpoint, that that you know, you just have to have those federal permits. You have to. We've been operating uh, federal lands and the grasslands since 1954, but it, it's more than federal lands. And I had a good caller on the radio the, earlier this week. He said, "Why do you have to operate on public lands?" Well. Public land in uh, account across the U.S. are about 22% of our oil and natural gas production. And certainly in Wyoming, New Mexico, Utah, that's what drives their economy. In North Dakota, a lot of the federal minerals are underneath private surface. So it's a, a, you know, a cross-checking of, of private surface, federal, you know, forest service, uh, BLM, which is operated by the Bureau of land management and department of interior they operate all the minerals so you can have a scott can have a, a private surface out there own own all of the surface own owned a chunk of the minerals but there's some federal tract of minerals underneath his property or there's an old slough or there's federal minerals underneath that slough and federal surface you cannot produce or uh that federal mineral like or without a federal permit so that means that scott also gets uh, of course, cheated out of his mineral uh, ability to produce his minerals. So uh, it's a it's a big, big dark web, of course, of federal bureaucracy. And uh, fortunately, fortunately, we've had great relationships with the regional and the statewide folks. But now it's all being pushed back to Washington, and of course, uh, we know how that's going to shake out. So <laughs> let's hope that we get. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I mean, I thought of what happened this week. I agree with everything you said, but. You know, going back to what I first said, all these other states couldn't care less about federal laws, about illegal immigrants or carrying your guns, rolling guns, and they pretty much thumb their nose at at, uh, at federal law and do that. I, I just, as a sim, I I wouldn't even mind them doing it just as a symbolic thing for a week, just to just to, I mean, leftists do it to us all the time, so we got to start playing their games because because we're losing the big battle here. We're getting kneecapped by these people. We got to start getting down and dirty with them in my, in my opinion but i don't know bergen seems like he's too nice of a guy to do anything like that but i mean i'd like to see him do it anyways but you know i get where you're coming from but i'm 
I'm just sick of us of following the rules and, and, and their side doesn't follow the rules, I guess. It's getting pretty old. Well, <clears throat> appreciate the call, Jamie. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thanks, Scotty. You, you have a good day. You bet. 888-932-5682. That's 888-932-5682 if you want to call in and have any questions for Ron Ness here. You know, you see that uh, one of the text messages I got was the price of, of a barrel of oil, you said, went up. What was it, eighteen dollars now? And and uh, was it a month ago? You and I were discussing that to break even for some of these oil companies is like forty some dollars for a barrel, right? Is that where? Right? Yeah, I generally think that uh, break even if you got a well and it's producing, uh, you you're gonna want to you know you're gonna want forty dollars for that barrel of oil, forty five dollars, of yeah. course, uh, to get in a good price and then to go to access pipeline. But if you're gonna drill new wells, I think you're gonna want to have uh, you know I've said. Uh, upper upper 50s into into the low 60s and, and we're there now it's just that there's just no confidence and and uh yeah. just you know what the previous caller talked about is that it's going to take a while to restore that confidence but you know we're still producing 1.2 million barrels a day and uh we're doing this fine we're just gonna have to hunker down and uh, figure out a path through all of this and see what happens so the price of gas at the pump let's talk about that a little bit because uh I know the state, uh, North Dakota state just, uh, increased the gas tax. Uh, what was it? Three cents or something like that up to 20. Well, the, cents, the, the, the house of representatives passed uh, okay. a bill that increased it by three cents. So now all bills that pass in one chamber, they move over to the other chamber. So now the North Dakota Senate will have to, uh, also pass that bill. And then ultimately it would go to the governor. So there are three big steps in the process. So, um, one one of those three steps on virtually all the legislation that you're talking about is is past one of the three big steps so, thus far. Yeah. So is it a good thing for the price of a barrel of oil to go up for the uh, oil field side of things? But you, on the other hand, you're saying that they're they're still uh, kind of holding back, uh, wanting to really go uh, uh, step in feet first here on this because. Uh, what's what's driving the price right now? Is it because we're getting oil from overseas again, or what's the deal? Uh, what's driving the price? Is yeah, just speculation. I, I think what's driving the price is this: the messages from the uh, the messages to the market from the Biden administration okay. that we, we're shutting down federal land permits, we're shutting down pipelines, we're we're moving away from fossil fuels, and and the markets react to those things, as you know, just like in in the cattle market when you hear about some. Uh, something going on somewhere in the world, it, it moves the markets, and today it's moved the markets. So, yeah. uh, Scott, I do have the uh, details on some of these pheasant uh, mule deer banquets. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, tonight tonight in uh, in Jamestown, uh, the night to Columbus at 6 o'clock is a mule deer banquet, and uh, Minot next Saturday, March 6th, uh, 2 o'clock, and uh, March 3rd in Mandan, as we discussed, with a gun and palooza starting at 2 o'clock in the banquet at Minot next Saturday, March 6th. Uh, two o'clock and uh, March third in Mandan, as we discussed, with a gun and palooza starting at two o'clock and the banquet at six. Uh, March uh, March twenty sixth in Dickinson and in Saint and Beulah. So you can find these events at uh, muledeer dot org and click on chapters in North Dakota or contact Marshall Johnson if you want tickets today or any of those days at seven zero one nine eight nine four four eight eight. Marshall Johnson, 701-989-4488. And I was just looking on the website here, Scott. It looks like a reminder to all those hunters out there. You've got, I think, until the, about the last week in March to put in your big game. The big your three. Big game applications. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to cover three of the South Dakota ones since we're on those stations, too. So if you're a mule deer uh, event in South Dakota, we have uh, March 16th at Hot Springs, South Dakota, March 18th in Rapid City, South Dakota, and April 9th in Brandon, South Dakota. So there you go. And uh, yeah, the big three, elk, moose, bighorn sheep. Have you drawn any of those three yet, Ron? Uh, I think I put in when I was uh, 15 years old, and I'm a much older than that now. So no. <laughs> nope. Still waiting. <laughs> Every year that. for about 40 years. So oh, I'm a good man. contributor. But Do you feel that they should yeah. have a point system? Since it's a, a resident only and it's a once in a lifetime tag, do you feel? Uh, what's your opinion on a point system on this? Because I mean, there's some people that are in their seventies have been putting in for fifty years probably that'll never have the chance to go hunting, and somebody can go in there and uh, the first year they can draw all three. Actually, I had a friend that drew uh, two of the three the first year they ever put in. 
Well, uh, I don't. I guess I don't know why they wouldn't, Scott. I'd, I'd like to see it retroactive for forty years, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think you're right. Now there's there is a there's forty a points would be if nice you do put in. Yeah. If you do put in for a cow tag, I think your your odds are really really good of getting right. a, a cow tag in any of those species. So uh, I guess at at some point we all got to think about that. But um, I, the other uh, the other thing I was looking at today, I I'm not in Bismarck, but uh, I would assume that the Missouri River is going to be opening up pretty soon. You're going to have the the fishermen. Uh, oh yeah, with this type of weather, they're going to be out there hitting it hard. So guess what I did this year for the first time ever. You'll never, I, I entered a fishing tournament for this summer. And that's new for me. I, well, I don't do it for you, you that know. there was a fishing tournament because most of the fishing <laughs> tournaments were canceled last summer. So they were, but this year I'm doing the Dakota walleye classic out of Beulah. And you, every year I've been going up and help my buddy run patrol boat and we sit and fish, yeah. you know, when there's nothing to patrol. I mean, if somebody's not in trouble, it's just kind of a day of sitting there and having a, having a beer and drink and, uh, you know, fishing a little bit. So I figured, well, let's enter the tournament and get a little bit more serious about this. So, uh, we got drawn in or team 129 out of 190 teams this year. And, uh, it's kind of a tough one to get in because it, it fills up like super quick. So, so there you go, Ron, uh, my first well, professional fishing tournament. <clears throat> That's what I'm calling. Well, it. I, I assume it's just like uh coyote tournaments, right? You just got to, Catch more. Get out there <laughs> catch and get out ones. Catch more. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds easy. That's how it works. <laughs> no doubt. So, you, uh, any other uh, hunting adventures you got planned up for this year? I mean, uh, I, did you put in for your Montana elk by any chance? Uh, that's open right now, I have, by the way. I have not. I have uh, got to sit down and, and think about some of those things. I, I am, uh, as you know, we've got our uh, North Dakota Petroleum Foundation tree planting program. We've got a that's right a big uh, a big list of landowners that we're going to uh, help uh, assist with tree plantings this spring again we i think our number is um over three years we've planted 110,000 trees uh just a great program and you know that uh, there was a i, I saw a cut kind of program the other day talking about climate change and it, it was i'm going to try and talk track this guy down and i use a meteorologist talking about uh climate change and how actually the the climate warming 1% is, is still 2% lower than optimal in terms of the greening of, of the world and, and the amount of trees and, and crop production. And, um, this guy was just, he was just fantastic. He said, you know, carbon dioxide, when you look at it is, is pretty much by all science is, is a good thing to a certain level. And, and we've optimized, we're optimizing that a little bit. And, of course, the only science that's not good in is political science. He said, and uh, he was a he was a very non political type meteorologist, and he had all of these facts and uh, all of this stuff. And he thought, you know, when we're talking about habitat and trees, and those are the things that we should be focused on, trying to um, enhance the opportunities that we have. So I'm going to try and track him down and uh, get some more information out of him. But we started that tree planting program, and it has been a huge success. And um, We've got another good program uh, going this year. We've recently uh, got a, a trapper out at uh, my place this spring. He started earlier this week, so I'm interested to see how he did as we're trying to improve our pheasant population by uh, so many raccoons. And uh, <laughs> you and I were talking earlier, those beavers are just, uh, so if you live along a stream or a river, they are just critters. They are tree destructors, like unbelievable. So yeah. got a few things going on this spring. Yeah, I tell you what, it's been a more difficult year for trapping until this cold weather definitely did help. There's no doubt about that. But uh, spring moisture, even with the tree planting, if people really want to get some tree rows around their yard or put some uh, some new tree belts, you come out to my place. You've been out here a few times now. You see, I mean, the tree belt around this place has been here for almost 60, 70 years. It's been there a long time. It's uh, there's a there's a life expectancy of those a lot of those trees. If somebody wants to put in a new tree belt, would that be possibility through the same program? Uh, yes, absolutely. And uh, as long as it's uh, designated for wildlife, and this is a, a, a partnership that we have with the North Dakota Outdoor Heritage Fund, and uh, it's been a, been a great program. So, uh, of course, you can always talk talk to your local uh, uh, NRCS office, but uh, yeah. we, you can you can go to our website, and we're going to start taking signups for 2022. Uh, at the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation, 
uh, website and uh, find the uh, planting for the future program. And we're we're uh, these are the, the difference between our program. This is your program as the landowner. We we supply you with the trees and and the expertise and, and the equipment, but you you decide uh, where and how you want these trees to go, and you take care of them. And uh, you are uh, we are assisting you, but you are the uh, you are the shepherd of these yeah. of these trees to make them survive and get them uh, moving forward. And I, I think that's the way it should be uh, in terms of some of these. Uh, opportunities the landowners got to got to have that responsibility now you, it, as you know it it takes yeah. that tlc to make them yes, work it does especially and depends on the area that you're planting now you said it as long as it's designated to uh conservation of some sort is that mean you you have to uh, not hunt on it or there are certain types of hunting no that or? means it's not a that means it's not a two two row belt around your trailer house <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> they're your trees Fair you enough. decide who hunts on them but <laughs> I, i've seen i've seen a, a abandoned two rows that hold a lot of pheasants sometime though <laughs> hey, we can definitely uh, have a little fun with that well i tell you what ron i appreciate you coming on the program making time on a saturday especially when you could be out golfing probably right now all right, Scott. Thanks a lot. Have a great week. You bet. You too. Ron Ness, North Dakota Petroleum Council. If you have any more con, uh, questions, comments, you can always find more information online that way. Hey, a few things. I know the YouTube guys are wondering, why Why did I dress up for the show today on YouTube? Well, I'm hitting the road. I'll be in Bismarck uh, today at around noon here. I have a bull sale at the Bismarck Livestock Auction uh, that I'm going to be helping out with. So I'm going to be heading up that way. Next weekend is the DK Red Angus. I'll be doing the same thing. I'll be dressed up, ready to hit the road immediately afterwards. I'll be in Williston, North Dakota for the at the Sitting Bull Auction for the DK Red Angus sale. Uh, if you have any questions, comments about that sale, you can sure get in contact with me as uh, one of your representatives. A few other things going on. The Bizman Reel and Rec Club. Their 40th annual Walleye Derby is going to be Saturday, May 15th. I know it's a long ways away, but think about it. You got to get in on some of this here at the Grainer Bottoms. Uh, make sure if you want any information on this, you can contact the tournament director, Sherry Saylor, at 701 400 4395. And a nice little thing here the Dakota Fish Fest. It's uh, the fourth annual Heart Butte Dam. We call it Lake Chida. Uh, it's their youth tournament coming up on June 12th. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing here. I know it's some of these tournaments are a little bit further away. We're done with coyote tournaments for the most part here. So we're going into uh, some of the fishing tournaments still happening around the areas. And uh, there's a few more. But anyway, June 12th for that youth fishing tournament on Lake Chida. I wonder if they still have the Heart Butte uh, uh, Farmers Union Camp that was there at one time when I was way back in the day here. And a few other ones coming up here I have uh, that were sent to me via text message. The uh, Wild Game Feed, the second annual Wild Game Feed auction and home cooked food is going on at the Dunn County Fair Association area, sponsored by the Dunn County Fair Association. This is coming up uh, this uh, next month, March 21st, in Kildeer, North Dakota, at the High Plains Community Center. Social at 4 to 5, meal at 5 to 7, auction starts at 7 o'clock, and uh, just uh, all kinds of stuff. Now, you want to know what's on the meal docket? This is what I like about wild game feeds. You get to try a lot of different things. Uh, there's deer, there's elk, moose, buffalo, pheasant, turkey, duck, uh, fish, pork. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more fun. Rattlesnake, armadillo meat here, beaver, uh, camel, and alligator. I've never had camel before and armadillo. I don't think I've had that, but all the other ones I've had. So there you go. The wild game feed and auction coming up in uh, Kildeer on March 21st is what's happening there. So there you have it. If you have any items of interest, you'd like to be announced here on the radio program. Uh, feel free to send them to me. 701-425-6651. Oh, congratulations. Derek Stallman, Selby, South Dakota. You break in the unrestricted state record walleye, 31 and a half inch fish, Get that 31 and a half inches uh, weighed in at 14 pounds, 15 ounces taken uh, on Lake Oahe dark house spearing. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Derek, on that one. Pretty cool. Hey, big thanks to Action Motorsports for being one of my sponsors today. Swing in and talk to Britt today and see if uh, he tell him you want the cabbing special on those uh, ATVs and UTVs down there. And don't forget about Doug Morrison down at Ponderosa screen printing and embroidery, Rapid City, South Dakota. He'll take care of you. Hey, thanks for listening to Dakota Prairie Outdoors today. Catch my daily program. Eat some meat, drink some milk today. 
All right, stations, thank you so much. YouTube, have a good one. I'm going to hit the road as quick as I can. See ya.